No matter your skill level at Linux or anything that surrounds Linux, there are a few things that I think that everyone should learn. Now, I've talked about this subject before in more general app-centric terms. Things like Vim. I think everybody should learn Vim. I think everybody should learn Nano. You know, if you're going to learn the terminal, I think you should learn certain terminal commands. You know, there are things in Linux that I've talked about before that I think that everybody should learn. But I want what I wanted to talk about today was five things more in depth about Linux that I think everybody should learn. And this is, doesn't really only pertain to new users. This is pretty much for everyone. There are certain things on Linux that if you learn them, you will have a better time. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't use Linux without knowing these things. I used Linux for a very long time without knowing several of these things. So it is possible to be perfectly happy on Linux without knowing them. But learning these five things will help you do more things on Linux. So let's go ahead and jump in. The first one, and this is one that I still have problems with to this day, and that is SSH. Now, why would you need to use SSH? Now, maybe you don't have a whole bunch of other computers or you don't have a you know a server farm or a, a remote VPS that you have to, to remote into. You know, you, maybe you're not that type of person, but even if you're not, SSH can be useful if only for it allows you to use other tools, things like Git, which we'll talk about here in a few minutes. Things like being able to SSH into other computers if you do have them. Things like, you know, maybe having a website someday. You know, whatever the situation is, SSH allows you to do more things. And basically what SSH does is it allows you through the internet to remote access other computers no matter where they're at now obviously there requires quite a bit of setup in order for this to, to work and it is fairly complicated and i highly encourage you to look on youtube for any number of tutorials because i know dt has one i'm pretty sure brody has one you know a lot of the youtube guys have how to use ssh and i highly recommend you go search those things out because it does require some tinkering in order to get up and running and i'm not good at explaining it that's the reason why i don't have a video on it but the idea behind ssh is that it allows you to connect to remote servers and computers and this can be useful in a whole bunch of situations specifically i use it for git all the time now for the longest time when i was using just github I would use the GitHub access credentials. Basically, it allowed me to sign into GitHub through the terminal and upload to my repositories in that, in that fashion. They still do technically allow you to do that, but it re requires some more finagling in order for you to do. SSH is just so much easier once you have it set up, and it allows you to basically upload to Git without entering a password or any of that stuff if you don't want to. And it's just, it's a very useful tool, and I think everyone should at least give it a try. Now, Speaking of Git, I think I'll go ahead and use Git as the next one. Now, now, not everyone has to use GitHub or GitLab. There are many self-hosted and open source repository collectors on the internet. Things like Codebird and things like that. You can be where, wherever you want, but Git itself as a standard that a lot of different places use allows you to store things online and that can be very useful. Now, it doesn't mean like uh, you're just going to be storing your backups or your whole music collection up there. That's not really what Git is for, although I suppose technically you could probably use it for something like that if you wanted to, to do that. But really what Git's for, for is, and what it's really useful for, is storing projects up there. So if you are a developer of some sort or if you're you know, a distro maintainer or something like that, Git can be very useful. But even if you're not a developer... Chances are you do have configuration files on your computer that you've spent some time cultivating and by uploading them to Git, not only can you share them with others if you want to, but you can also back them up. So if you're a window manager user and you have your Qtile or Xmonad or DWM configuration files on your system, by using Git, you can upload to a Git repository your configuration files, and then when you reinstall or distro hop or move to a new computer or whatever, it's very easy to pull them back down and then just continue on with your day. Now, obviously, you can use traditional backup methods if you'd want to, but Git allows you to have an online free way of backing up your configuration files, and it's very, very simple. And it's obviously much more powerful if you are a developer. You can collaborate with other people and you can 
have different branches and things like that. There's a whole bunch of stuff that Git can do that I don't use because I'm not a developer. But if you just want to use it at its simplest form to back up your configuration files like I do, it's just a very, very useful tool. And learning how to use it in the terminal or in the GUI, however you want to use it, can be very useful for you if that's what you choose to do. Now, the next one that I want to talk about is more broad. And I've talked about this before, but I wanted to include it again because there are some things that I think that, you know, you should just, you know, learn. And that is basic terminal movement commands. So even if you've dedicated yourself to using Linux in a way where you never have to touch the command line, and that's perfectly fine, there are still going to be some instances where you do end up having to open a terminal. It's just kind of inevitable that eventually you're going to find yourself in the terminal with a command that you have to execute. And it's just it's better for you to know something about it in the event that you get into that situation and have no idea what you're doing. You know, it, it just if you have some idea, you're going to be much better off. One of the main things that you can do to prevent yourself from getting into the situation where you have no clue what you're doing is to learn basic movement commands, things like MV, CP, CD, things like that. Basically, just learning how to move between different directories, how to copy different directories, how to, you know, remove directories and files and stuff like that. If you can learn those basic commands, even if you never use them, you'll be better off because eventually if you do get into the situation where you have to know how to move around, you'll have learned those basic commands. And they're not hard. So I think everybody should just, you know, sit down, Google basic Linux terminal commands and then go through a few of them now i do have a video coming out here pretty soon about the most popular linux commands and i'll talk about that in that video there but just i would say learn how to use mv cp cd rm and maybe mkdir those five commands if you learn those five commands you're going to be golden and even if you've used them very rarely learning them won't take that much time and it could save your bacon in the future now, the fourth one on the list is one that is going to be a little bit controversial simply because not everyone really needs it, right? It's not something that, you know, you could use your computer for all time and never have to deal with this. But I think that if you learn cron, you'll be very happy. Now, what is cron? Basically, cron is a service that runs on your system that will allow you to execute jobs. So if you are, for example, familiar with macOS, macOS has a system called Automator. And basically what Automator is, is a front end for cron. Now, I don't know if the technological differences there are you know, worthwhile knowing. I have no clue, I'm not a macOS guy. But the idea is that you can automate things on a schedule to do, you know, certain tasks and now on linux we use cron basically what you could do for example let's just say you wanted to back up your system every friday at three o'clock p.m eastern time you could do that with cron now obviously there are some other requirements there to do that specific task but basically what cron would allow you to do is automate that so every friday at three o'clock p.m eastern time it would execute whatever commands you need in order to back up your system or say for example you want to constantly update your weather script for your bar or panel or whatever and it doesn't have a, a it doesn't have a built-in automatic updating system you could use cron for that just to run the command every you know half hour or hour or whatever you wanted to do and then it would output to wherever you needed to be outputted so the basic idea behind cron is that you give it a task give it a, a, a time period where you want it to execute that task and it will do that on a schedule every time that time comes up and it can be basically anything that you wanted to do and it just works really really well now it does have some learning curve so i have made a video in the past about how to use cron i'll link that in the video description the basic idea again is just to be able to automate things on your system now i would say that again you could go your entire Linux career and never have to use cron, but cron is one of those tools that can make you, your productivity so much better. If you have certain things that you're always constantly doing, you know, every day, and you know, you can just automate that by writing a script and then having cron execute the script that can save you a lot of time. The last one on the list is rsync. Now I have preached until I'm blue in the face. Every tech YouTuber out there has, you know, told you the importance of backing up your system you don't need to hear from th that from me again 
if you're not backing up your, your, your system, you know, eventually that's going to bite you in the ass and that's your problem, right? Because obviously you haven't been paying attention. But everyone needs to back up their system and that means that you need tools to do so. And there are a lot of tools to back up your system. The one that I use is rsync and I've done a video on rsync before and gone in depth on how to use it and all this stuff. So I, I will link to that video in the video description as well. But the idea behind rsync basically allows you to take whatever directory you want to back up and point it towards the directory where you want to back it up to. And you can just run this command in the terminal or through a GUI if you want to use grsync. And it just basically backs up whatever directories you want to a location of your choosing. It has a ton of power, so you can get into, you know, having it back up to remote places. You can have it, you know, do Delta updates so that you can you can back up just the things that have changed in the directory or whatever you want to do. Rsync is basically as powerful as you want to make it. It can be very simple. It can be very complicated, however you want to use it. But the idea, very simply, is that it allows you to back up your system or your files to wherever you want it to be. And it's just very easy to do so. You can just you can basically put it into a script or just remember a line or whatever, and run it. It will do the backup, and then you're done. Uh, and if you you put that into combination with cron, you could have it so that your backups happen at a certain time every week, every day, every month, whatever you want to do, and it'd be automated. You never have to look at it, and it's just a thing that happens in the background. That you have for whenever it happens that your computer crashes and you need to go access your data. Backups are very much like insurance. You don't want to ever have to use them, but it's really good to have. And if you set up a system where it's automated, where you don't ever have to really pay attention to it, uh, between Crown and RSync, you could do that and it, it could really save your bacon. Uh, sometime in the future when your computer crashes. So those are the five things I think everybody should learn no matter what level of Linux you know user you are. Uh, if, if I would have to say which one that I regret not learning more about, that would be SSH because SSH really truly does open up a whole bunch of opportunities for you to do a whole bunch of different things like use Git, like access servers and being able to set up a whole bunch of like a home lab or things like that. And if, you know, I want to learn more about that stuff. So SSH is the thing that I'm going to be learning more about over the coming months. So that is it for this video. If you have thoughts on any of this stuff, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'm back to losing my voice again. So apparently I'm only going to get two videos done today. Anyways, uh, that is it for this video. If you, you have thoughts on any of this stuff, again, comments in the comment section below. Uh, you can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. Uh, you can... Uh, I totally mixed that up. I, <laughs> I did it fine in the last video. I didn't do it fine this time. Anyways, uh, thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. Seriously, just thank you guys so very much. Especially for sticking with me throughout my hiatus here of making videos so i truly do appreciate everybody who stuck around which is the vast majority of people so thank you so much for your support thanks everybody for watching i'll see you